Well, here we are. Here he is, James. It's a nice office here. He's got all these bookshelves. He's got a pia piano. Look at that. It looks like an old-time record player. More, like, big monitors. I, I'm excited for the day when the stuff we have is considered old and intimidating. Yeah. That'll be cool. Something about, like, a, a rich person in a Victorian-style house is slightly intimidating. Yeah, imagine, like, if someday it's like you have to be, like, a rich antique collector to have, you know... An iPad. Yeah. <laughs> Just got shelves upon shelves of iPads. There's some weird painting on the wall over here. It appears to be, like, like nine images of the same guy in different colors. That's like a pop art. Like the, uh... Yeah. The it's... Andy Warhol thing. That's weird. And there's some statue... And there's some... Let's see. There he is. As you approach, James Telestrian III looks up from the computer screen built into the surface of his desk and assesses you. Calculating in cold, a practiced smile comes to his face. He vibes the kind of rich you don't get from Trivid. It's not the clothing or the trappings or the bow before your betters mansion. Yeah, you're just saying about the in intimidating decor. Right. It, it's something else. The feeling that you're being categorized as a resource or a liability or a pawn. I have been reviewing the results of your visit to my Seattle office last night. I admit, they are impressive. You have generated a considerable amount of damage to my office complex, killed or wounded many of my security personnel, and cost my vice president of security his job. In 24 hours, you have accumulated quite a bill with me, sir. How do you intend to settle your debt? Now, if we had etiquette corporate, we have, once my current assignment is complete, I would be happy to discuss working off my debt to you, Mr. Telestrian, but we don't have that. That doesn't see, that seems more like a Shadowrunner thing to say. Well, Shadowrunner is for, like, interacting with other Shadowrunners. I suppose. Alright. Let's see. You have con already confiscated the container I took. I have no other bargaining chip. Well, it's probably not a good idea to say I have no other bargaining chips, so... Would you take a check? <laughs> I understand humor. I do not appreciate it, but I understand its uses. <laughs> this is a fun guy, huh? Right. Yours was not a good use of humor, however. It neither charmed me, disarmed the tension, nor infuriated me to the point of providing you with a quick death. <laughs> okay, I like this guy. <laughs> I like this guy. Before you attempt any more of your lowbrow monkey shines, I will lay out your tactical situation. You have one piece of information which you might use as a bargaining chip in the little time you have left to live. Why you took- why- why you took what you took. I'm interested to know why you and your team of criminals fought your way through my security teams up to my private office to access the Matrix and uncover the location of a simple research project. See, It goes like this. Your half-brother, Sam Watts, hired me to find his own killer. He had a dead man switch. When I find the killer, I get paid. Or, I took the Aegis sample to kill giant insect spirits. I kind of want to... I kind of want to let... I want to see what happens if I let drop the fact that I know Sam Watts is his half-brother. Because as you recall... As you recall... Okay. As you recall, his grandfather left some sort of, uh... Left a will that would, that would skip past his son to his grandchildren. Right. And... And James Celestrian's father had an affair with uh, Sam Watts' mother, producing Sam. And so, and so they were paying her to keep that hushed up so that he could get the entire, you know, the whole thing. All right. So I kind of want to let drop the fact that we know about the half-brother thing. I just want to see what happens. It goes like this. Your half-brother, Sam Watts, hired me to find his own killer. He had a dead man switch. When I find the killer, I get paid. You impress me, sir. My, my father's bastards are intentionally not well known, even to themselves. Nevertheless, I fail to see the connection between this Sam Watts' death and a raid on one of my office buildings. There is no connection between the research project and the dead man that I am aware of. Sam was killed by your half-sister, Jessica. Okay, yeah, I think Sam and Jessica were twins. It's been a while. Sam was killed by your half-sister, Jessica. Jessica is protected by giant bugs. <laughs> <laughs> Aegis kills giant bugs. Kill the bugs, kill Jessica. Get paid. 
I, I find your bluntness. I find your bluntness somehow refreshing. He touches a button on the desk. Mr. Quoth, please ask my daughter to join us. I f yeah, I feel like you talking like that like it would endear you to a highbrow rich person. <laughs> talking like hey, an idiot. <laughs> hey, look who this is. Remember her? Um... We found her in the basement of a certain evil bug-worshipping cult. Oh, yeah. The young, pretty elf has dark circles under her eyes and a haunted expression on her face. She recognizes you instantly. Maurice Louise Telestrian. It's you! You're the man who has helped me escape from the Universal Brotherhood. How did you get here? Telestrian cuts in quickly. Thank you, Marie Louise. You have confirmed the identity of your rescuer and given me reason to forgive him for his trespasses against me. And all those murders. <laughs> she looks hungry. Well, keep in mind, this guy, to him, they're, they're, they're just... They're just I doubt, he, I doubt he has any deep emotional connection to any of those people we killed, you know? Yeah, that's true. This is not... This is not a, uh... This is not a nice... He, he may be affable, but this is not a nice guy. And actually, we're gonna get a little, a little indication of just how not a nice guy he is in a bit. She looks hungry for your help. I'm glad you're here. Good to see you got out okay, Marie-Louise. I'm not okay. I can't sleep at all. I'm afraid that this is a dream and that I'll wake up there and they'll still be there with the bugs. You can re relax, Marie Louise. You are safe. It is over. Let 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 Papa Creepy comfort you. <laughs> no! It won't be over till they're all dead. She shudders. You didn't see them. You don't understand. You and those men you flew in here. All you do is talk. It's just like you to form a committee, father. I knew that someone had to take action. That's why I got Harkeem involved. The already cold exterior of James Telestrian III turns to ice. I see. It was you and your crippled little friend who leaked Aegis to this man. We will speak of it later, in private. Now then, Flan... Okay, now I'm just going to uh, mention something here because it's subtle. But I remember I mentioned there's a bit of foreshadowing when we were talking to uh, Baron Somdi. Yeah. He was introducing himself, and he said, I can walk into... And then he stops himself and says... I can go, I can enter any you know any place, or you know any database or whatever, and like I said, it's a subtle hint that he he starts to say walk and then like it suddenly it's like he's uncomfortable with the word. Oh. And, cause uh, if I say he he wasn't born on a he well he was born unable to walk we're all born unable to walk but he wasn't <laughs> born disabled let's say. I see it was you and your crippled little friend who leaked Aegis to this man. We will speak of it later. In private. Now then, Flandry, there are people I wish you to meet. The committee my daughter alluded to. This is a rare opportunity for a man of the street such as yourself. <laughs> I urge you to behave. We will adjourn to the library. I would be delighted. I don't know if that is sarcasm or not. Just behave. I like the fact that there's like tons of dialogue options to this that don't like affect the story or anything, but it just like lets you, you know, define, you know, what kind of character you are. <laughs> like most of the smart-ass remarks in this game, they don't... Oh, there is a weight in Telestrian's library, a sense of magnitude and of purpose. You are no longer in the presence of mere wealth. You are in the presence of history. Like, most of the smart-ass remarks, they don't have any, like, mechanical effect or anything, but if you want your character to be a smart-ass, they're there for you. Well, I appreciate RPGs that allow you to characterize a char um, the main character. Yeah. Like, when you think of, like, Persona 4, mm -hmm. um, the canon character they made was yeah. the third choice in all the dialogue, which okay. turns him into the weird, like, bizarrely charming, but, like, non-sequitur, very, really? very weird main character. I, I, need, I need to have a look over that, see, like, see what it is. And yeah, like, in Persona 4, a lot of the dialogue choices, just like in the cutscenes, like, they didn't, they didn't change anything, but it was just, you could, you know, you could decide what you wanted to say. Yeah. It was fun. All right, James Celestrian III, let's see what he has to say now. Hey, there's Algernon over there. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Flandry. I just, I just imagine, I just imagine him, like, being, uh, Flandry. He is the human who saved my daughter, and is the only one who has faced our common enemy in combat. Herr Brackhaus, what does the representative of the great dragon Laufir have to tell us about the magical insect this shadow runner uncovered? Laufir is, as he said, a great dragon who he he, he slept for you know millennia and then he woke up you know in, in, during the awakening in 2012. 
He's currently the president and sole owner of the Sater Krupp Corporation, which is the single largest mega corporation on Earth. Hmm. I, 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 I keep coming back to this a lot, but it's I do it because it's it, it sums things up so well. There are three powers on Earth in the 2050s with nuclear aircraft carriers: the Can United Canadian American States, the Imperial Japanese Navy, and Sater Krupp. <laughs> Herr Brackhaus, what does the representative of the great dragon, Laufweer, have to tell us about the magical insect this Shadowrunner uncovered? Brackhaus speaks slowly with a deep, melodious German accent. He takes his time, accentuating each word, relishing each vowel and each consonant, tasting them as if they were a delicacy. Okay, I'm just going to say it now, because I'm not sure if they actually mention it in this one or if it's only in Dragonfall, but Herr, Herr Brackhaus, this is Laufweer. Okay. The great dragons, they can take on human forms. Oh. Oh, so he's, like, legitimately a dragon. Yeah, yeah. Huh. Yeah, I was a bit lost there. Yeah. Yeah, I, I believe this actually is, yeah, this is Laufweer. He's just posing as his own employee, basically, so he can be slightly less terrifying to people, I guess. My lord Laufweer has witnessed the insect spirit physical manifestation before. Roughly 9,000 years ago. As you are aware, magic ebbs and flows from the earth. Okay, okay I'm not doing a German accent, too. <laughs> Cycling from peak to peak over the course of 5,200 years, as the level of magic grows... And I've told you before, you know, the cycles of magic rising and falling in the world? Yeah. This, in two, 2012, marked the beginning of what's called the Sixth World, when magic returned. As the level of magic grows... Hans, dear, I love you, but you could babble on forever, and I believe time is of the essence. I don't know what voice to do with this guy. <laughs> the painted elf address, address you. This is Harlequin. He is this weird elf, mage, ninja, something or other. He's um he's 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 from the uh, like the previous. He's like an NPC in some of the tabletop stuff. Hmm. He's actually I'll just explain here because I don't think they mentioned. He's actually very very old. He's um. One of the one of the small group of elves that are not just long lived but immortal. Oh. And he's actually old enough to remember the fourth world, the last time magic was around. Huh. Which, like I said, I don't know if they can canonically say this explicitly anymore because of rights differences. But in the originally in Shadowrun, the fourth world of the Shadowrun universe was was otherwise known as the RPG Earth Dawn. Oh, okay. They were actually in, that Earth Dawn was actually set in Earth's prehistory and in Shadowrun's prehistory. So. So, and so if he was in the fourth age, then, or fourth world, uh, mm. then the magic doesn't go, when the magic goes away, like, he doesn't go away. Like I, his, Well, his... a lot of the magical creatures sleep. Okay. I'm not sure if he slept or if he just went incognito as a human, but, like, the great dragons, they, like, they, like, tuck themselves into, like, you know, layers deep, deep underground and just slept for millennia. Nice. Until, until there was enough magic in the world to support their existence, their, you know, activities again. Flandry, is it? Delighted. The bug you fought was not merely a magically awakened animal like a wyvern or hydra or anything else in the Sixth World. In fact, it isn't from this world at all. It's the physical embodiment of an insect spirit from another plane of existence. <laughs> we've, got, we've got an option. Before you go on, I've got to ask, who the hell are you and why are you dressed like that? <laughs> <laughs> Let's ask him that. Excellent question. One I've asked myself many times. Daddy was a drinker. <laughs> and someday he got a little more crazy than usual. Oh, I'm sorry. Now, an ins and after, after you're saying, you know, it's an excellent question, he just ignores it and says, Now, an insect spirit can't simply thumb a ride through astral space and show up on Earth late for dinner. Dinner, in this case, being us. Oh, and here's Algernon. Two, anima two elements are required to bring one across the void. A shaman and a host. First, the spirit calls upon a shaman, often in dreams. The spirit that seduces the shaman with promises of great power. The shaman then accepts the spirit as his totem. Remember we were talking about earlier, he said he found the concept of an insect totem repugnant? Right. He wasn't telling us all he knew, but now he is. Next, the insect spirit requires a suitable host. James Fleshing the Third. The best 
the best candidates are the disinfect are disaffect are the disaffected and the disenfranchised. In short, the weak willed. Their minds are the most susceptible to suggestion, which is helpful in making the transformation. As you may imagine, these are the sort of people easily attracted to a cult, such as the Universal Brotherhood. Finally, by transforming what has to be a truly by performing what has to be a truly disgusting ritual, the shaman serving the insect totem implants the spirit into the host, willingly or not. Then it's feeding time. Herr Hans Brackhaus. Harlia Quinn is correct. I, I, I'm d I am doing the, the German accent. There Hell with go. it. 